He was asked to condemn and denounce the KKK as a hateful organization. And he Neo-Nazis, white supremacists. And he would not do it. He had he had about three opportunities yeah. during during that questioning where and, he could have. And he deflected. He says, well, we should talk about Antifa. And they're mm -hmm. like, no, I we want just for my president. We would like for you to say that you're going to condemn. And he knew he couldn't do it mm -hmm. because I feel anyways from that move that he made. And this is my assumption mm -hmm. is that he understands that there is a large sect of this country country that votes that believes in those neo-nazi yeah, beliefs yeah, yeah. and they're going to vote for him so he won't say it but instead he'll deflect and say well what about this mm -hmm. he uses what about isms which is literally an eight-year-old in five four three two one what's up everybody <laughs> welcome to another episode of the genius brain podcast if you're a first time listener this is a podcast about anything and everything genius brain is a another way of saying that i'm fucking dumb it is chicken soup for your soul exactly <laughs> <laughs> people, people, there was some, somebody who wrote. They go, uh, they go. Don't you think it's a little uh, self-centered to say that uh, to call your podcast genius? Brain? Oh, another one <laughs> again. And I'm like, you are so stupid. I hope you die. <laughs> Just listen to one episode, and you'll yeah. realize this is a podcast of some of the dumbest people on earth. <laughs> genius brain. What the fuck is wrong with you guys, man? Not you guys. Another person. Come on, guys. Hate Get them. it together, all right? Well, apparently we had to talk about this. Oh, yeah. The the fucking the most fire presidential debate <laughs> the I've, best ever, I've seen ever seen in my life. That shit was fascinating. <laughs> you know the thing is, um, halfway through watching it, I forgot for a second that this is reality. Like yeah. this is this is real. <laughs> This is not some scripted like sketch. I was like, oh, holy. Sh I just felt like so exhausted at that point. Like, dude, can it was, you if you had like anxiety, mm -hmm. it was hard to get through because I just wanted somebody to finish a sentence. Yeah. Just anything. Right. And there was a moment where they were, I wouldn't say cordial, but there was a point where the moderator had a, who's the moderator against? Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace. So yeah. Chris Wallace, it was funny watching Chris Wallace because he was being very cordial at first too. <laughs> and then at a certain point he had to raise his voice. Sir, sir, Mr. President, Mr. President, yeah. Mr. President. He just couldn't stop. He, you, did you did you notice he stopped calling him Mr. President towards the end? It mm -hmm. was just sir. Yeah. He he just didn't have any more respect for this guy. He goes, sir, sir, <laughs> sir. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Sleepy Joe is the most funniest yeah. fucking moniker for him. Yeah, to, to to Trump's credit, that is a pretty funny nickname. Um, but <laughs> It was just, you know, is it was. Uh, I said this on Twitter, but it was like watching a petulant child argue with a senile old grandpa, yeah. uh, with a with a responsible adult trying to, you know, <laughs> prevent it from going off the rails. That's what it was like, you know. It's like two kindergartners fighting over a lollipop. Yeah, dude. I was like, holy shit. Look, man. I I think though that was Trump's strategy. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it was just to disrupt the whole thing, make sure that um, Joe can't really say anything substantial and, yeah. and really get a point across. And you know, I think Joe did find some spots where he was trying to connect with the you know American people by looking directly into the the camera and talking to them straight up. Yeah, but Trump wasn't having it, man. He, he kept talking over him. Yeah, he wasn't having it, and um. You know what the crazy shit is? There's actually a committee that exists for presidential debates. It's called the CPD, Committee mm -hmm. of Presidential Debates, right? So now they're looking at kind of changing up the structure for the debate. And one of those changes are going to be muting the mic. And I'm like, okay, there's a fucking commission. Why is that not a standard in a debate? That like, would have helped out a lot. Yeah, and look, they had that before. They had that before, and so I don't understand why uh, in in more recent debates that that is not something that's there. Just give them the button. Just go. Dude, okay, cool. Beep. It's fucking twenty twenty. Yeah. It's not hard to have a, a you know a, something in place to to mute the mic of of the other candidate. Um, and there's it's not that hard. I think that they should implement a fact checker. Like oh a fact checker real would time, be great yeah. real time right so the, in a day they don't have the fact checker doesn't necessarily have to disrupt the debate it's just more like a pop up a pop up yeah because yeah. I even do this for this podcast yeah. I have like fact check shit where I'll say some crazy salacious why, shit why is why <laughs> look why is that not a standard in this day and age if there's a fucking like what is this committee doing or, yeah. or this commission doing like what 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 are they doing what are they regulating what are they because because the, the hard part is generally for you know i forgot what there was a phrase about statistics it was like 
you know what? I'm not going to even slaughter it. I'm going to put my little fact check bubble there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was something along the lines of like good liars use statistics. And it's like statistics are used by good liars mm-hmm. or some shit like that, mm-hmm. right? Because the problem that I have with any type of political debate or anybody who has uh, something that they say uh, are facts and not opinions, right? Mm-hmm. Because this podcast is all opinion based. Right, and course. you can fact check my shit all day. And I guarantee you 99% of the time, your boy wrong. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, because it's based on my opinions and people yeah. can have uh, their own thought about certain things. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that when we start bringing definitive statistics and numbers, and the general public doesn't know, you could make anything sound smart. Not exactly. I could man. literally say, like, you know, the problem with this country today is that there are about 60% of people in this country are unregistered immigrants who are criminals and rapists. And literally 90% of people who come to this country have a criminal history of being a rapist, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. This was fact. And I could say an institution and I could say something as salacious as that. Yeah. And people hear numbers and statistics and they immediately believe it as fact. And not to mention something like the presidential debate should be held to a higher standard. Yeah. People are tuning in to get facts, to get an idea. Look, I'm, I'm going to assume that most people who are tuning in um, aren't necessarily undecided on who they're going to vote for. Yeah. But there are those people who are undecided. And if they're tuning in to see, like, why does this person deserve my vote? And they're like you said, they're just throwing out facts. I mean, <laughs> facts. Yeah, you know? factoids. Yeah, um, numbers, statistics, right? And, and naming institutions to back up whatever claim they're making. But then there is no real time fact checking that's happening. Yeah, you could lie through your fucking teeth, which is what Trump was doing, right? Because it was even a couple of times. I forgot where what, what Joe Biden was saying, but he was talking about the. He was. It was. It had something to do with COVID numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Now I could take those numbers and consider it as fact, mm-hmm. but then because there's no fact check checking. We just have to go by their words mm-hmm. or afterwards when they're done, we have to double check for ourselves. Right. And, I, and I think that's what they're expecting the general public to do. But I think that from now, what you've seen on Twitter and everything else, nobody really does that. Right. They just listen to this. Like, for example, um, so, you know, the fires that happened, mm-hmm. right? It was because uh, it was it, it started from a lady who uh, did this gender reveal party mm-hmm. thing, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, the person who started the gender reveal party, she just did it because she enjoys parties. Mm-hmm. She likes being very festive. And if you see a picture of the original cake that she had, it's just busted ass cake. It's nothing really big, right? Mm-hmm. There was one thing that I saw on Twitter. I can't find it anymore. But somebody put up this thing on Twitter and it was the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. They wrote this They wrote this whole backstory saying mm-hmm. that the person who started the gender reveal party, the reason why she did it was because she had multiple miscarriages. And before she could find out the gender of the baby, mm-hmm. the baby would pass away. Uh. And so they put that out on Twitter and immediately it became fact. Nobody double checked. <laughs> and so I, I remember when I read that, I was like, this sounds like a parody or something, right? <laughs> a little fishy. So I Googled it, <laughs> uh-huh. right? And not a single article could be found. And every article where she's been interviewed, she stated, I wish I never did the gender reveal party because it's something ridiculous. And I'm just somebody who's very festive, who likes to do fun <laughs> things. But somebody put that shit on Twitter and it had a ridiculous ridiculous amount of retweets and so when i did this like uh i did a, a vlog and i just talked about gender reveal party somebody was calling me an asshole saying like well you're kind of an asshole because gender reveal parties happen because this lady had multiple miscarriages and i'm like holy shit you oh. are so confident enough to call somebody else out on their bullshit because you read something on twitter yeah that I, blew my fucking mind that's gonna ultimately be the downfall of like our society man it's just so much misinformation gets put out there and it gets spread so easily speaking of wildfires that's it spreads like wildfire yeah you know um and look even in this debate there it, it was hard to even take away anything uh like there, there was no cohesive point that was being made because there was so much nonsense going on right mm-hmm. it, it, like it was just unintelligible what they were saying because it's just interrupting. And they're just talking over each other. Three white, nobody wanted to see three old white dudes just trying to argue and talk over each other. You know what I like mean? It was like just two geriatric fucks <laughs> arguing about some dusty ass pussy in their old home. Like I just, in the old people's home, I'm like, yo, shut the, f-. I wanted to be there and just tell everybody to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like you shut the fuck up and yeah. you shut the fuck well, up. Well, Joe did say at one point, will you just shut up, man? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was like the best part of the debate somebody finally told this dude just shut up dude yeah, just, just shut, shut up man it almost like i want to say it's tactical but at the other time i just think he's just a narcissist like oh, he, he is for he sure just he can't 
he can't not stop being himself for right. one fucking second. You look at his face when um, Joe is talking and he's trying so hard not to say anything at yeah. some points. But as soon as Joe says something negative, he can't handle it. Yeah. And he, he needs a super 100% defensive mode. Yeah. Even if he, he defends with uh, just lies, he, he will de- try to defend himself no matter what, right? Because he doesn't know how to be in this type of professional setting yeah. in any sense of the way. And people don't, and I don't understand why people still want to bring this up when it comes to try. First of all, man, I, I just want to put this out here. People have been trying to label me as uh, at whatever political party. They're like, is, is he right wing? I'm whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I won't even tell you what, what, what party I'm registered for because it really doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter for me because I don't know enough about politics to usually really talk about it Mm -hmm. i can only see it for what i think it is right that's why you never hear me talk about politics because i don't fucking know yeah so when it comes to these type of things it's just sometimes it's hard to really filter through all the bullshit because i i I see this where i see two guys well this is what my biggest issue right now is that every time i see a tweet about and this is for somebody who doesn't know what's going on really um about why we should vote for Biden. Mm-hmm. The the major campaign behind him is that we have to get Trump out of office. Mm-hmm. But if I ask somebody, what do you like about him? They mm-hmm. go, we have to get Trump out of office. I'm mm-hmm. like, so the only reason why you're going to vote for Biden is because you dislike this person so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not saying that that's um, like, I disagree with that, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it would be nice for me to know What's so great about Biden, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that just kind of goes to show like what weird reality TV show that we're in right now, where a majority of people don't know the reason why they're voting. Mm-hmm. They just know that, fuck this guy, I need to get him out. So we're, we'll just put anybody in there at this yeah. point, you know, yeah. which is weird. I mean, but that's how kind of, uh, how much, uh, I guess, politics has devolved is that it, we're at that point now. It's a reality TV show. Yeah, where it's like the guy who's in charge is is so ridiculous, so outrageous, so deceitful that the kind of the driving force behind, you know, Joe Biden's campaign is we need to vote this guy out of office. Because you have like a super long list, like almost an infinite list of reasons of why Trump is not fit for a president, mm-hmm. right? I think any reasonable, logical person can look at the facts, look at the details and be like, yeah, this guy is pretty ridiculous, you know? Um, In order to be 100% supportive of him, you either have to be one, um, blind or ignore the facts, right? Or two, there's certain policies, you have certain policies that you wanna see being brought to the forefront and that's your agenda as as whatever party you're you're affiliated with, right? And look, there are intelligent people who will kind of just say, yeah, it's it's all fine and good because the policies I care about yeah. are, are are being put in motion, you know? And it's just like, dude, I, how can you ignore everything else about what this person stands for and what this person represents when he's supposed to be the president of the United States? I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll put it to you like this. I have a, an, uh, like a substantially older family member, mm-hmm. like pretty old. Mm-hmm. And this person is a hardcore Christian mm-hmm. And I'll tell you this, this person loves Trump. Mm -hmm. This is a Korean person. Mm -hmm. And the way this person talks about Trump is so odd. So in my mind, because she's hardcore Christian, you would think that she wouldn't vote for this person, Mm -hmm. right? Because though he talks about Christianity and faith, his actions speak otherwise. (laughs) Um, It's completely contradictory. Exactly. So (laughs) when I see some of these churches back up Trump and say he's a man of God, Mm -hmm. I wonder what that is. Right. And now religion is becoming involved in this president. Well, not even now. It's always been involved in this presidential, in the presidential race anyways, mm-hmm. just because of the, the way this country is backed and created or how it started anyways. It's rooted in a, in a lot of like uh, the Protestant religion, like Christianity and stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to when it comes to that, she specifically loves Trump because she says she's Christian. Mm-hmm. And if we say, but he's not Christian, I'm talking about she gets livid and like mm-hmm. she gets fucking mad. She goes, don't even start with me on that shit. But which is which is so odd because I'm like, how can you deny you're seeing how he is as a person? Yeah. This I could say anything. I could say I could be on this mic and say, "Hey guys, let me tell you something. It's really tough having a fucking tennis dick." Mm. You know? But unless you see the tip of it from the start of my pants all the way out to these short ass red shorts, you, you don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's weird. Is it because why I wonder why people see that just as face value from is it because just he just said it out loud? Cuz 
I'm pretty sure. I think Joe Biden Christian too. Yeah. Um, oh no, I think wait, Joe Biden might be Catholic. Catholic. Well, yeah. he's a, of the Protestant religion yeah. or whatever the yeah, uh, Christian Christian religion. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, look, man, I think they just Judeo Christian uh, or whatever. They, they yeah. just uh, are looking for things to grab at. I mean, just because Trump did a photo op in front of a church holding up a Bible makes him a stand up Christian. You know, like I'm surprised this. he didn't burn on sight. That's just fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's kind of ridiculous, like all the Christian values that are really, um, I guess, stressed on within the, the religion. This podcast is brought to you by Junbi Matcha. Not all matcha is curated and created the same, and Junbi Matcha stands out above the rest. If your matcha isn't a beautiful shade of jade green and doesn't have an earthy smooth taste, then you're definitely not having Junbi. Matcha is not supposed to be bitter. The caffeine boost and health benefits you get from it are the best. No caffeine jitters and loaded with antioxidants. To get 10% off your first order of tins and packets, go to junbishop.com. That's J U N B I shop.com and enter code Genius Brain to get 10% off your first order today. Get that matcha on. I mean, baby. what is Trump really doing to uphold those values or, or to, to even push those values, right? Um, I mean, this guy is what, divorced three times? Yeah. Two, two, two three times at least, you know? Um, he, He'll be raping women and yeah, shit. Yeah, well, talks about grabbing women by the pussy, yeah. right? Like, so like that's a that's the pillar of the. Is the that Christian how a community. conservative Christian talks and yeah. thinks? You know so what I'm I mean? Confused. And so, so it's like that's what I'm saying. You have to either one be oblivious to the facts or ignore mm -hmm. the facts if you yeah. do know the facts. That's yeah. the only way that you can line up your agenda with with in in uh, with a guy like this supporting a guy like this. Otherwise, it's it's like. If you're a decent human being, um, and, and and this is not even from a political standpoint, if you're just a decent human being, let's say no political affiliation, you, you don't affiliate with the left or the right, you're just looking at it objectively. You look at kind of like the values that are considered good in our society, and then you look at a person like this, how can you say that is somebody that's presidential? You know, yeah. Be because the president historically right? It's it's somebody that's supposed to uh, be a man or woman with integrity, with honor, who's a role model, uh, who basically leads by action, right? Be intelligent. All of those things that I just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Are without. Yeah. Trump doesn't check the box on any of those. He doesn't have any of those qualifications. I, I, I think he got into office or why people liked him was because he quote unquote wasn't the typical presidential candidate. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what they kind of uh, fell in love with. I think the the hard part for me when it when it came to him coming to office was knowing his background, how many, because they were saying, oh, he's a businessman. So mm -hmm. he's gonna run this country like a business, no emotions involved, he's just gonna make the right choices, mm -hmm. right? But that motherfucker went bankrupt a gajillion times yeah. and used mommy and daddy's money. So yeah. I don't understand how that really works. A small loan of a million dollars from his dad. Yeah. <laughs> Like how many, up. how many families in America can yeah. give their child a million dollar loan, a small million dollar loan, you know? Yeah. Uh, so his, his, I think his perception of reality is completely skewed because of the way he, he grew up privileged, super yeah. privileged. Um, so his head is, is just not in the right place, man. He doesn't look at things the way a normal person looks at, looks at it because he can't. Yeah. He, he, he's never experienced that. And so he doesn't have these world, uh, real worldly experience that's relevant to being able to be a compassionate person, a relatable person. And so if, if his only qualification was that he's a quote unquote successful businessman, how has he, how has he been uh, running the country so far? Yeah. I, I mean, some of these staunch supporters of his will say, oh, he's been doing a great fucking job. Really? What, what, what has he done exactly that makes him... Um, makes it qualified to say that he's doing a great job with the COVID response, with yeah. the unemployment, creating jobs, right? Yeah. Well, what has he done? You know what I'm saying? I think from what I read, the people from, I mean, I, I'm just reading up a few things. I think what people liked about him was, um, I think there's a lot of gung-ho Americans that didn't like the way, I don't know, per, President Obama positioned America as a in term of power in this in in, in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, when Trump did 
there was a lot of people that like, yo, this guy's going to get us fucking killed. Like, for example, with the whole North Korea situation, mm -hmm. um, I was reading a, a couple of things online where there's a lot of people who supported that because mm -hmm. they were like, Trump is saying that America isn't a bunch of pussies. And he was saying like, yo, go ahead. Throw your fucking missiles at us, missile man, mm -hmm. and, or rocket man, and mm -hmm. I'll show you how, how dope we are. Mm -hmm. So people liked his position of America not being a bunch of wimps and bowing down to other countries and kind of setting America's power as who we are in this world. <sighs> so that's like the stuff that people enjoyed about him um, yeah. that I, I think people still to this day very much support. I Look, don't know. As yeah. a, as a like um, gun loving, you know, red, white, and blue American type of person, I could see how that might be appealing but in politics, yeah, right? In terms of world power, diplomacy, there's a there's a certain decorum that's yeah. required. There's a certain way to handle these things. Mm -hmm. And it's not by just yelling and and flexing on another country and tweeting about you know, we'll, we'll show you the likes of that you've never seen before. And, yeah. he, and he also appealed to a lot of middle America, right, which people i think forget exists oh, a lot of racists yeah it's well i mean we could even talk about that during the presidential yeah. debate right too he, they, he, he was could asked, not he, he cannot he condemn. was asked to condemn and denounce the kkk as a hateful organization and he neo-nazis white supremacists he, and he would not do it. He had he had about three opportunities yeah. during during that questioning where and, he could have and he deflected and he says well we should talk about antifa and they're mm -hmm. like no i we want just for my president, we would like for you to say that you're going to condemn. And he knew he couldn't do it mm. because I feel anyways from that move that he made, and this is my assumption, mm. is that he understands that there is a large sect of this country country that votes, that believes in those neo-Nazi yeah, beliefs, yeah. and they're going to vote for him. So he won't say it. But instead, he'll deflect and say, well, what about this? Mm -hmm. He uses what about isms, which is literally an eight-year-old tactic. That's, that's all, or not all, okay, a lot of Trump supporters. That it's just always, shocked me when he yeah. went, I was like, oh, this is a breeze for Trump. He's going to mm -hmm. be like, yeah, of course, like KKK, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't do it. I was mm. shocked. I was I was well, actually shocked. Not only that is he identified, uh, you know, extreme alt right group, the Proud Boys, by mm. name, yeah. and then he said, "Stand back and stand by." He didn't say stand. Chris Wallace, his his questioning said, uh, "Would you tell him? Would you condemn and tell him to stand down?" Yeah, that that's what he said specifically. He said, "Stand back and stand by," and now members of the Proud Boys took that as as a call to arms almost. You know, and, and celebrate it that we're right. I mean, like, what, 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 what is the implication there when you're saying stand back and stand by? Sounds very militaristic. Yeah, exactly. It's saying stand by for some shit. If, yeah. if, 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 if we need to call on you, stand by. But for now, stand back and stand by, though. And so that was like a fucking softball question. You yeah. know, you could have knocked that shit out of the park. So it is not hard to say. Like, be even before Chris Wallace finishes the question, you can stop right there. Yeah. yeah. Of course I condemn white supremacists and neo-Nazis or any hate groups. Yeah. But like you said, he had to transition into, what about Antifa though? Mm -hmm. Look, man, to be fair, I don't identify with a political party, but if there's any type of extreme groups that inciting violence, or committing acts of violence, whether it's on the left or the right. Nobody's with that shit. Yeah, nobody is with that shit. That should be condemned period yeah. but if you say that to a trump supporter about these hate groups these extreme uh, alt right groups these neo nazis these white supremacists that are uh causing violence or walking out in the streets with military gear and guns you know trying to patrol what they're doing is wrong they'll say what about antifa yeah what what about it, it, almost never will you see them acknowledge that like yeah that is wrong that shouldn't happen whereas for me, even though I'm not, I, I don't identify with the political political party, yet still I don't uh, support Trump, I could say, uh, if anybody's doing that shit on the left side, there is there is an extreme, because look, the head of uh, uh, FBI, right? And, and Trump's FBI said Antifa is more of an idea than an actual group that exists. But I'm sure there are people out there who take that ideology and act on it, right? Yeah. Internalize it and act on it. So if there are people like that, those people are, not only wrong, but they're criminals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to commit acts of violence on people, uh, especially in, in like peaceful protest setting. Look, self-defense is a whole different thing. If if there is rioting and somebody's like coming at you in, in a very hostile manner or trying to attack you, you got to defend yourself. That's one thing to be like, all right, we're going to go out there and cause chaos 
and, and uh, create havoc, that that's just like an anarchist, yeah. you know? And so that's the thing, man. It's like, that's what's so frustrating about the current climate, like within politics, is that all of these staunch Trump supporters will not be willing to have an objective conversation on the situation. They're so gung ho about everything Trump stands for, you know, about making America great or it, America is great now uh, because of Trump. It's like, dude, what are you, what are you fucking looking at, man? Well, now it's becoming to this point, and I think I've mentioned this before, where a lot of these symbols that we have in our country that was supposed to be um, an idea of like universal freedom, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. example, like I'll just say uh, to that, I'll say like our American flag. Uh, I forgot who I had this conversation with, but it was something along the lines we were talking about. Isn't it funny how the American flag is now, when we look at it, me personally, when I see it, it reminds me of racism. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird that how somebody on the side of, they go, well, fuck, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, I, it, they're, they're on the opposite of a BLM and they wave the American flag, that the American flag is the opposite of a exactly, BLM. Exactly. So, like, I don't understand. So now it's becoming convoluted where people are taking this idea of what America is uh, into something very negative. It's It's weird how the flag can be waved as this is what America stands for. And sometimes the people who are waving the American flag, they are being representative of an ideology that people who want equal rights for themselves, it's they're saying that we're the opposite of what you want. So it's becoming all mixed and muddled together, it, right? It has become more about perception than facts. Yeah, and it was when I when I talked about, for example, like the MAGA hat back mm -hmm. in the day, right? Mm -hmm. I think when, what people like to do when they, when they wanna argue mm -hmm. their point, they wanna talk about surface level things that really are e extremely irrelevant. Like, for mm -hmm. example, with the make make America great again hat, right? They say, well, what's wrong with wearing a MAGA hat, right? Like it's just a hat with with words. I want to I want to make America great again. Why why can't I feel that way? It's never about the hat, right? It's what that hat represents. It's the symbolism. It's the symbolism it. behind it, right? Because we could talk about that with anything. If I were to break it down, right? We could talk about it with the uh, the, the the rising sun tat uh, the rising sun. Mm -hmm. If you have a rising sun tattoo on your arm right? We could just say, dude, that's just the sun. When the sun rises, that's what it looks like. <laughs> but that's like a, that's like a Nazi symbol to a Korean person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So people won't look at that. They just want to prove their point. They go, this is just a hat. Yeah. Things are obviously just a hat. Yeah. We could say just to anything to, but, but you're completely ignoring what something might represent. Exactly. And what, it, what it does represent. It could m represent that to you. There's context. There's context to it. Yeah. Right. And people just want to ignore that because they want to be right. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can wear that hat and say, Hey, like I I'm wearing this hat because I feel like America isn't the way that I feel like it should be. And this is not any offense to you, but this is what it represents to me. Mm -hmm. But instead, the the response is, I could wear whatever the fuck I want, fuck you, right? And to other people too, when they see that hat, they're also not trying to have a conversation. It's like, hey, do you think it's a smart idea to wear that yeah. hat in a group of people who are maybe colored, yeah. who feel very uncomfortable with you wearing that hat? Mm -hmm. Do you mind taking it off, mm -hmm. right? But people get very extreme they get upset they get in their emotions and not willing to have a conversation yeah and and again it's it's all based on perception and not facts like a lot of these people aren't educated on things like for example you know a big thing ever since trump has been in office is that if you disagree and you have like uh more liberal views on things you're a communist you're a marxist like do you even fucking know what that means yeah it's <laughs> Just because you don't agree with uh, what a Republican candidate or a Republican president is doing and saying, and not just as a Republican, because he's a fucking ridiculous dude, mm -hmm. right? Does not mean you're a fucking communist by default. It's not, if you're not this, you're automatically this. But because that idea and kind of that ideology, it, it just keeps getting spread like places on Twitter. They say it without even understanding or knowing what it is that they're saying. Oh, you don't agree? Yeah. You're a communist. It's a lot of like, things are should never just be considered black and white. There's a lot of identity politics too. Mm -hmm. So if you go, if you disagree, like for example, right? Like if you, let's say, um, like me, like if I say, oh, I disagree with uh, certain things that Trump wants to do with this policy, right? Mm -hmm. And they go, well, you fucking left wing nut. Like, right. I bet you're super fucking lit. It's like, well, hold on a second. How come I can't be, let's say I'm a Republican, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't I be a Republican that disagrees 
with this presidential candidate who is also Republican with some of the way that he ha- that he handles things and still be a Republican. Because mm-hmm. policy wise, I'm probably a lot more right wing, but socially, I'm probably a little more liberal. Mm-hmm. And that's just kind of where I lie. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just say that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But the moment that you say something that disagrees with the party that you're that you're that they think that you're not affiliated with, they'll immediately group you into the other side and they'll and they'll basically disregard everything that you say because you're either extremely conservative or you're extremely liberal. Why can't I just be an individual that has an idea about the policies on both sides? Exactly. And they don't want to hear it. They just yeah. I think people want to create enemies. They want to anchor themselves to something because they need to be labeled. Yeah. I think that's the problem with a lot of people. People people say don't label me, but you motherfuckers can't live without a label. Mm-hmm. You cannot live without identifying yourself to a certain group or something else. And if somebody falls astray from that idea, you want to group them into something else without even asking them who they are as a person, mm-hmm. right? So I, I see it constantly all the time. If I, if you or an I or anybody else has an opinion, you only think that if you don't agree with me th- with this part, then you're the exact opposite of who I want to be or who I am. Mm-hmm. And not every topic that you talk about with somebody should be dealt with like that. No, exactly, right? man. We're not talking about like kidnapping children. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I do completely agree, man. You can be 100% Republican, a conservative Republican, and still have criticisms against Trump. It's but but that's not that's not what it is now. Mm-hmm. What it is now is just this mob mentality. It's yeah. like you're either with us or against us. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be Republican if you are critical or disagree yeah. with what Trump is doing. That doesn't make you a Republican. Then you're a communist. Yeah. It's you like know, you, you're, you're, you're a snowflake. Yeah. Right. You're a snowflake. Yeah. It's crazy to me, man. How like how polarized uh, politics have become. I mean, look, man. What the GOP represents now. It's, it's actually ironic because if you look at it historically, the, uh, the Democrat is the Democratic Party is more like what the GOP party was historically mm. for most of history. And now GOP, the GOP has become this like really left field, super skewed, um, ridiculous idea party. Uh, with a bunch of cowards in it, to be, to be frank, because a lot of these guys are just kind of uh, backing Trump uh, for, l- let's say, certain policies that they want put up front, right? Mm-hmm. They're not willing to take a stand and be like, look, I can't agree with that. Yeah. That, that. That is not, I mean, look, there are a handful of people who have stood up to it, but I, I would say most of those people are cowards, man. And you know, there's there's a huge part that people don't even mention, which I think a big part of the responsibility also lies with media. Because mm-hmm. media does, and you know, social media out, outlets like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, that they allow for a lot of false information to fly out. Uh, there's actually a documentary about uh, the social media um, on, on Netflix. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but it's basically people who are all involved with some of the biggest social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. um, your, uh, what do you, uh, TikTok, TikTok, or no, no, not TikTok. Um, Snapchat? I think Google, oh, Google, uh, yeah. YouTube. Um, and, uh, what's, uh, what's the one with the red logo, uh, where you see like a bunch of, it's like a curation of different stuff. Hold up, Red it's logo. gonna it's it's gonna bother me if I don't if I don't uh, what the Pinterest word? Pinterest oh Pinterest <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't remember for yeah. some reason but anyway it's uh, people who were basically part of may- maybe the core team or held high positions in these companies mm-hmm. all coming out to talk about how dangerous social media has become for spreading misinformation um, so yeah I completely agree man there should be some checks and balances in place for that but. Uh, going back to the whole, the media being accountable, right? Yeah. Here's the thing is there's always going to be uh, media outlets that have a certain bias. And the thing is people will still choose to get their news and get their information from a certain media outlet and a media outlet that might be more aligned with their views and their values and their, their uh, political party. Right. So let's say somebody is, you know, extreme left or extreme right, like an extreme left person is not going to go to like an extreme right news outlet or, or media outlet looking for information and news. They're going to stick to ones that are more aligned with their views. And same with somebody who's like extreme right. They're going to look to extreme right outlets. Oh, that's what happens on Facebook consistently. Mm-hmm. Like I had, a, I had to have a conversation with somebody where they were kind of bringing up, they were very upset on Facebook, po- constantly posting stuff that 
um, and raise them about, you know, left wing politics. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I messaged with him on, on a DM on a personal thing, it's like, Hey, I'm not saying I agree or disagree with anything that you're saying, but you sound very angry about stuff that is information that's constantly being fed to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I screen capped him my Facebook. Right. I was like, I, he's like, I don't go on Facebook at all, but just because I live in California, you want to see the stuff that comes up on my story. It's all liberal left wing stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and if I picked out a handful of these stuff, it's going to refute every article that you put out in a video. It will have the same video. It'll be by Vox Media and then some other stuff. And they'll chop it up in a way that kind of caters towards what they want to say and their agenda. So you don't even understand that you're just a little bitch in this game. And you're being, you're a pawn. Like people are using you. They're fucking with you emotionally. Yeah, but but to be fair, to be fair, there is misinformation on both sides. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So th um, that's what I just said. It was, they're gearing it towards their bias. Right. And so whatever information, right wing outlet that you have mm -hmm. is going to gear it towards your right wing bias. Mm -hmm. And this left side media is going to gear it towards sure. their left wing For bias. Sure. So we're not really looking for truth what algorithmically what these companies do they just look for stuff that you are specifically going to be interested in yeah they don't give a fuck about the truth yeah. they don't give a fuck about unbiased opinions yeah. it's more like what is this what does this person want to see and how can i get them to buy more shit exactly i mean it's an age of sensationalism and clickbaits you right? know how much bullshit i bought during quarantine <laughs> the stuff that i know i for a, for a fact i didn't fucking need yeah i bought this shit where you could attach it to your sink i saw one video it mm -hmm. was this person just had a bunch of spaghetti Mm -hmm. and he just dumped the strainer and you connect this to the side and i was like you know what there are multiple times where i've washed my dishes and i wanted to get rid of the stuff and i didn't want to put it down the drain i yeah. bought that shit in two seconds yeah that's you know, crazy i didn't need that stuff but they knew they that, know what i like. I know because they're listening man they're they're they fucking, know what i like look it i highly recommend that people watch let me let me uh look up the documentary name just to make sure okay. i believe it was called the social hack um but i highly highly recommend uh, that documentary on Netflix. Um, let me see here. But you know what I did find out um, through the whole presidential debate was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's called the, no, it's not the great hack. Fuck. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll look it up next time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll put it up on you. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. I think Mariel was watching it uh, okay. a, couple, a week ago or so. Yeah, it's it's really informative because like I said, these people were inside members of the team behind mm -hmm. these uh, social media companies. And so they give a lot of insight to why they think it's so dangerous and why they're actually taking measures to, to counteract that now. Um, they're not part of the companies anymore. Um, but I wonder why it's so hard for people nowadays to have uh, open conversation and and a, and a willingness to hear what somebody else has to say. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm any better, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes you, know, when you get heated about certain subjects, sometimes you're heated. But it, it is going to take people um, some personal knowledge about themselves to understand that number one, maybe I'm not as open minded as I thought I was. Maybe I'm not right all the time, and Maybe I should take a second to stop and listen to what somebody else has to say, even if you don't agree with them, right? Because you, it, there's nothing happens when you don't have empathy, when you don't understand where somebody else is coming from, because somebody says the things that they say and they think the way that they do for a fucking reason, right? Mm -hmm. Not to say that they're right or that they're wrong, but in order for you to kind of bridge this, that, that weird area where I say like a, that bridge is just filled with hate right? There has to be some type of understanding for you guys to meet in the middle, not to say to, to bring somebody over to your side, but to just understand where they're coming from. Because when you start to understand why they think that way, then you can kind of empathize with them and allows you to get along with them cordially. Absolutely. You know, and I don't think a lot of people want to do that. And it happens a lot with the youth because I'm thinking about myself when I'm younger too. We're just so emotionally volatile and people are fucking using that against us so well yeah man you know? that's what these social media companies are doing yeah you know um look man having empathy and compassion isn't a weakness it isn't it's it's, it's just about being a decent human being man yeah. it's like but the problem is is that i feel like in this day and age uh, there's a good amount of people uh throughout the country where they don't have an open mind and, and they're not willing to have an open mind they're just so uh stuck in their views and they're unwilling to compromise on that it makes it hard to have an open conversation yeah. because it, it can come off as an attack to them 
um, or they just want to be right or a mix of both. Whatever the case is, it's like if, if one person is not willing to have an open mind for a conversation, then the whole thing falls apart. Both yeah. parties need to be. Uh, they, they both need to come to the table with an open mind, be willing to have a civil, intelligent conversation about whatever topic is 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 uh, the focus. Some 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 people too, man. I feel like some of y'all just like to argue just for the sake of arguing. Like some some of the stuff that I know you motherfuckers argue about, you don't know shit about. You just want to argue with somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad part, right? Yeah. And that's how it is with politics a lot. It's okay to say you don't know what the fuck is going on with with the political scene in this country mm -hmm. at all. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know, you don't know. Right, right. Or or maybe there's only a limited amount of things you know and just focus on that then. Yeah, it, just leave it yeah. there. You don't have to know like every single thing that's happening and every single thing that's going on. Don't. But I remember when uh, uh, every fucking influencer was being flamed for not speaking up about politics. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't think they should. I don't think the that's... guy that uh, that finger fucks himself <laughs> with a banana and then throws goop at his face should do a political campaign for anybody. Right. I think he should shut the fuck up, right. sit down and not say shit. Yeah. That's what I think. And they're like, well, and this is the phrase that I hate the most. He goes, uh, people love using this phrase and i think it's one of the most commonly used phrases that should never be used again mm -hmm. it's it's better to do something than nothing at all and that is not true i disagree with that wholeheartedly it's better to do nothing if you don't know what the fuck you're doing exactly <laughs> you know exactly that's a better thing rather watch and learn than yeah sit listen i mean Look, God gave us two years for a reason. Yeah. And only one of these. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying too. And I'll give you a great example. It's like, would you say that about somebody who has a fire in front of them, right? He doesn't know how a fire starts. He doesn't know um, what causes it to combust or any type of chemicals that'll make it work. He sees a liquid in front of him, <laughs> right? That I got to light it up. Yeah. This, this liquid <laughs> happens to be... Gasoline. 99% <laughs> gasoline, right? And he goes, this is a liquid I'm going to put out that fire. And he does something and fucking light shit up. And then you look at him and say, it's better that he did something than nothing at all. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And that happens. I know I'm being a, a, a little bit hyperbolic, but that's what I feel happens sometimes with people who feel like they just need to argue. You just want to argue for the sake of being in a conversation. Sometimes you don't need to be in a conversation where you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up or do what I do. Say dumb shit and make jokes yeah. and just leave it at that. Or take the time to educate yourself, to 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 read up on it, to to yeah. you know research it, and then develop a, a view or an opinion about it, mm -hmm. uh, rather than just going into it completely blind and just saying something because you feel like it's a personal attack on maybe what you uh, believe in or what you think is right, without really having all the facts, right? I'll, I'll use a great example, right? Because I grew up, I grew up Christian my whole life. My father's a pastor and everything mm -hmm. else, right? And there's people who I know specifically in this city. And I think there's a lot of people who are atheist or agnostic or whatever. And um, they see how I speak and how I behave and they go, are, are you a Christian? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I would still say that I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. And they go, well, how can you prove that God exists? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit there and have a theological debate about the existence of an, an omnipotent being that I can't prove is here. I just say, I'm a, I believe what I believe because I believe that there's a God and there's a higher being. And they go, why? I'm like, to be honest with you, bro, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just feel like it is, you know, <laughs> this is how I've been rolling my whole life. And it helps, it helps with my moral compass. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's very therapeutic for me. And I and I, I don't know. I believe that there's a God out there. Mm -hmm. And if you're not okay with that answer, then it is what it is. But I'm not going to sit there and try to argue with somebody about something that I can't prove mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, God's existence just because I feel like I want to argue about something. Yeah. You know, like I have a pretty strong rooted faith in, in the Christian religion, but I'm not going to get mad when somebody, albeit even sometimes mocks my religion because I can't. What am I going to do and what am I going to say? I, I can't convince that person otherwise. I could just Especially be... if they don't want to be convinced. Exactly. It is what it is. Again, it goes back to having a conversation or entering the conversation with an open mind. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're really genuinely curious about, let's say, you know, what you're talking about right now, religion, right? Why do you believe what you believe? But then they're asking that question genuinely, like they're genuinely inquiring because they want to know. They want to hear it. They want to think about it. That's one thing. But then if you're asking that without really intending to listen and just no have a bunch of rebuttals in place, 
then that's not really an open-minded conversation. Yeah, that person is literally just arguing for the sake of arguing. Yeah, just trying to prove a point. And, and I, I dislike those people the most because really what you're trying to do is make somebody feel bad for believing the stuff that they believe. Look, and, and, and things like religion is obviously a little bit more sensitive topic too. Mm -hmm. um, and so... It, it, it requires even more so than other conversations for you to keep an open mind and, and to not be judgmental. Because uh, like, if you're asking a question about it, then listen, I'm willing to talk about it. But if you're asking just to argue with me, that's a that's a whole different approach. Yeah. So it's a, I don't know, man. It, it, it's so tricky with, with some of those sensitive topics because you don't know what the real intention of that person is. Yeah, man. Like, And to have these conversations are, it's difficult sometimes, but I think that we do need to start teaching people on how to how to have these type of conversations because uh, you, through uncomfortable situations like that, you do tend to learn a lot more if you mm -hmm. have an open mind, mm -hmm. like if you're willing to listen to what somebody has to say. Absolutely. Because right? I've been in a lot of those situations, specifically in, some, in being in a relationship. Like if you have been, ever been in a long-term relationship, and I always say this too, is that you, you never go into a relationship learning more about the person than you do about yourself. Because mm -hmm. you start to realize sometimes, about the stupid shit that you do mm -hmm. because you you want to have an, a healthy relationship anyways you want to have an open mind and have open conversations with the person that you're with right like there's a lot of stuff that i started uncovering about myself being with mariel that i didn't realize because i never had to address it because i was never in these uncomfortable situations mm -hmm. and at first because i was so adverse to um change that i it was easy just to blame it on my partner like oh this happens because of you um, I can't think of a very specific example right now, but mm -hmm. there have been a lot of aha moments where I was like, oh, I, I wasn't really listening to what she was saying. I just wanted to prove my point and prove that I was right in this conversation. Yeah. Look, you know, look, we we, we all are at fault with situations like that. We've yeah. all done. I mean, we're fucking human. You know what I mean? We're going to make those mistakes. But the important thing is, is to recognize those mistakes and try to learn from it. It doesn't mean that you're going to be impervious to making mistakes again, ever again. You're, you're as a human being, we are going to constantly fuck up. But the goal, at least, is to try to limit those fuck ups as much as possible yeah. by, by growing 100%. and learning from situations. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, going back to like the whole religion thing, too, um, for me, because most of my life I was a non believer and I became a believer later on in my life. I have that context. So when I talk to somebody- uh, Oh, you're a later Christian. Yeah, way later, like mid twenties. Well, your, your parents aren't Christian? No, well, now they are, now they are. That See, that's a, even more of a shock is they became believers at 60 years old, bro. Can you believe that shit? Damn, that's nuts. At that, 60, it, I at believe six, shit. At 60 years old, right? To first of all, be old school Koreans who are pretty like, I, come on at 60 dude you've you've lived enough life to be pretty set in like your views and your 100%. beliefs and your values but that's that, that that's how amazing it is man and, i think and, you're the first korean person that i met that didn't mm -hmm. grow up with like some type of like judeo-christian background no yeah i did it man um it was it was my own personal journey with it and so when I when I talk to non-believers, if the if the conversation happens to come up or I get asked about it or whatever, I don't ever approach it from a standpoint of like trying to impose my beliefs on somebody. You yeah. know, I just approach it as a human being. What does that do? What the fuck does that do? Nothing. It, it accomplishes absolutely nothing. nothing. It, I'm not trying to say, oh, because you're not a believer, you're going to. Come on, man. Like they're another human being and if they just want to have a conversation about it and it, and it seems like they're they they want to have um a productive conversation and an open conversation i'm more than willing to share my experience about it. and i can speak on it because i know how my life was like prior and mm. after and so i just i just share my experience with it and and like what my journey was like uh with that and so i've had completely um non-judgmental civil conversations about religion with people uh, as long as they're receptive to it. And then there's been times where it's like this because it's like, they don't really want to talk about it. They just want to argue about it, you know? And so it's, it's a very different thing with approach. Um, yeah. I mean, I've definitely had my handful of conversations with people where, especially when it came to religion, the immediate response is for them to call somebody stupid for believing in something that they, that isn't tangible, <sighs> you know? And at that point, it's like, 
why can't you know what from here on let's just kick it and chill yeah like, we're, this is not a conversation yeah this is you trying to make me feel bad about something that i believe in that doesn't affect you yeah it literally doesn't affect you I, you, you could you just gotta chill exactly exactly why, why why is it so important to you to to change my mind about something yeah you know something that does not affect you at all yeah. uh something that it, it doesn't uh, hurt you uh, it, it, it does it, it has no negative impact on your life. Like, this is not something that should matter to you at all. Yeah. Why, why is it so important then? That Wait, who, who introduced you to uh, Christianity then? I mean, look, I've been around it my whole life. You know, I, most of my friends, uh, would be Christian, like growing up in the church cause they're family. Uh, -huh. uh but it, nobody really introduced me to it you like, know this guy's going to hell we give up <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like yeah my friends would try to have conversations with me about it but it was honestly just a very personal journey for me you yeah. know it was a process of like learning uh going through certain life experiences uh, for me to arrive at that destination yeah. and then so that that's a yeah, that's a whole nother long story in yeah. and of itself, but I won't really get too into that. But yeah, it was it was my own personal journey with it. Mm -hmm. And I came to the conclusion on my own. It wasn't anybody who was really trying to like sway me into that direction. Like I remember high school, I was just passing out that purpose driven life book <laughs> to everybody. I was like, yo, this motherfucker going to hell. Hey, bro, you, mean you, should, you, mean, you want to read the purpose driven life? Yeah. And it was funny. I was giving people that book. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker, I didn't read it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I never read it myself. I was like, I heard this book so is I, good. Yeah, listen, I don't know what this book is about, but I think you should you should read it. Yeah, it, I, was like, I heard this shit is tight and I gave it to a bunch of people. I remember one of my friends came. I was like, remember when you tried to convert me to Christianity? I was like, yep, and you still going to hell. <laughs> Now, you know, you know, one thing, one thing that uh, I will say is um, when I, when I talk to non-believers, right, uh -huh. the example that I always give is like something that's pretty universal, I feel like, is look, when you, let's say, are like on the top of the mountain watching the sunset, off in the distance between the hills with all the trees, you know, you see the sun rays and different shades of color, right? You look at that and you think, that's fucking beautiful, mm -hmm. right? You look at that and think, wow, right? My, 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 um, not an argument, but my thinking about that is, is that's innate. That's not a learned thing. Mm -hmm. You don't learn to, to appreciate like landscape, right? You don't learn to appreciate certain things. You just, when you see it, it strikes a chord within you, right? Mm -hmm. And my reasoning for it, based on my belief is that because this world was created for us, for mm -hmm. man and women, right? And so it's innate in us already to appreciate what was created for us. And then so when you see things like that, you can't help but think, wow, that mm -hmm. is beautiful. Or wow, that's amazing. To, to have that type of sentiment and have that type that, that type of reaction. So that's that's always something that I, 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 I use as an example uh, of like um, a simple explanation for why uh, God exists, you know, um, some people can, can hear that and, and, and be able to relate to it. Or other people might think, uh, no, I mean, I still don't think that, you know, that's a reason to yeah. believe that God exists, which is completely fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not imposing that on you. Yeah. I'm just saying that's how I think about you it. You got to take them to the cliff and if they don't believe just throw them <laughs> right off. That. <laughs> you believe that. it now, bitch, <laughs> boom. And then you go to hell too. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the, uh, what was it? The debate real quick though. Yeah. Um, through it, I, I did a little bit of research because when Trump mentioned the Proud Boys by name, I wasn't really familiar with that group. I didn't know what the Proud Boys were. I mm. thought they were just saying somebody was proud. I had no <laughs> idea that was a group. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I knew of them, but I didn't really know anything about them, you mm -hmm. know? And so I started doing a, a little bit of research into them. One of the uh, original co-founders of Vice, is who started Proud Boys. What? Yeah, he's no longer with Vice, but you have to imagine somebody who is a journalist probably, um, and he's a founding member of the Proud Boys, they probably know how to get their message across. They probably know how to target the that's people. That's crazy, because isn't Vice hyper-liberal? No, so that's the thing. After he got pushed out, they started exposing these alt-right groups and all of that, right? Mm. So he's no longer with Vice. Okay. Yeah, he's just one of the original co-founders of it. Of that's Vice. Nuts. Yeah, that. So that's crazy to me that <laughs> somebody who, yeah, a platform that's uh, really progressive and and, and somewhat liberal. Uh, that that is what it's recognized for at this point. 
but yet one of the co-founders was that's a scary thing too where i i think when i look at somebody like president trump mm. who doesn't understand the power of his words he doesn't understand the the ripple effect that he has when he says things like the way that he does and he mm -hmm. doesn't under he doesn't take on that personal responsibility and for people who don't understand it and don't get that and mm -hmm. don't think that that's an issue mm -hmm. i want to know what's like to be in your fucking dumb fuck head <laughs> because... you know i i actually think the opposite i think he knows exactly he just doesn't give a fuck that's how morally bankrupt he is mm. he knows but he doesn't give a fuck uh, because like in that case when he was just like stand back when he said what uh stand back and stand by yeah i feel like he just was blabbing and mm -hmm. he says something like mm -hmm. that and mm -hmm. in his mind he doesn't even understand the ripple effect that that has oh right in that, that moment case, yeah like that you know what I that mean? type of moment I, and i don't yeah. want somebody like that to lead this country for sure that's an issue that i for have sure. policies aside it's like for example when he says something like china virus right mm -hmm. and the argument behind that it goes well it's a virus that came from china right but once again as as rudimentary and dumb as as dumb people are they don't ever want to think about context mm -hmm. and it's weird how they can only apply context to their personal life but they can't see it for others it's yeah. it's so hypocritical it's yeah. unreal right yeah. and i'll get to a point where i'll use an example for that later but when 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 he said something like china virus it was known that there was a spike in a lot of racial attacks towards Asian people because of this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in New York, there was somebody who was lit on fucking fire. Yeah. Right. And this stuff starts stems from a place of of improper rhetoric used by the leader of our country. Right. And because maybe he does understand that or doesn't understand that at all. I can't back somebody who doesn't get that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even for a personal level, as an Asian American, when you do that type of stuff, like for example, I was living in uh, South Pasadena for the longest fucking time. I've never had a single moment of, of uh, racism towards me the moment he said that within the next month i've had people giving me some of the dirtiest looks yeah and i'm like what in the what world am i in right now mm -hmm. so it honestly gave like a green light to a lot of people who had these ill feelings towards people of color whether it was asian or not and it's like it's almost like the president saying that gave them this like fire of like oh well if he says it i guess i could say it too mm -hmm. because he won't understand the personal responsibility that he has in creating such a negative outlook on american in this country is partial a big part of the reason why I can't back somebody like that. Once again, policies aside, and people don't want to see and they can't see that when, when all you have to do is apply that to your personal life and understand that, yeah, facts are facts, but you have to understand that there is a cause and effect to the stuff that you say, right? Like, for example, let's just say this. Um, Edric, you have a, uh, a really close friend of yours, right? Uh, recently passed away, mm -hmm. right? But this person was 600. Don't you do it. I'm going to fucking shoot. That. <laughs> <laughs> this person is uh, 600 pounds. Yeah. Right. And then we're at the funeral. Right. And I look at you and I go, well, if your fat fuck friend didn't eat himself to death, he probably would. She, he or she would probably still be alive. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is really true. These <laughs> yeah. are facts. Yeah. But I'm not looking at context <laughs> yeah. where I'm saying it and the ripple effect that it has on you or how it makes you feel. Right, right. And so if I apply that in my personal life, why can't I apply that to the president of the fucking United States? Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why people can't do that. Because, it's a very simple concept. Again, because they're, they're, they're not thinking about it that way. They don't want to open their mind to that. They don't want to, to look at reality or facts. They want to just be stuck in their beliefs because they feel good about it for whatever it empowers them in, in whatever shape or form um and and a lot of the message that would come out of trump's mouth is promoting hate instilling fear in people when you say the china virus what does that do it makes people fearful of one asian people right uh, because let's be real they're not going to be able to distinguish between a chinese yeah. or everyone's a chink right yeah. Two, you're promoting violence as well because you're, you're you're talking about it in such a negative like these are the people to blame mm -hmm. you know that's where it came from you know the china virus and look the media uh the news correspondents like they'll be there and they'll say like don't you think if you say the china virus that that's uh sending the wrong message or what it's the china virus what do you want me what do you want me to do it came from china like so he knows the reasons of why he shouldn't say it doesn't give a fuck though. It's because he, he's dumb. He just doubles down. Yeah. He doubles down whenever somebody's critical of him. He argues with 
um, lies and doubles down on his stance, whatever whatever the stance it may be. And I, you know, I'm, listen, I gotta be smart about my shit too. For the longest time too, when I when I saw that tweet of somebody who was in the White House and they overheard somebody calling uh, the the COVID nineteen the mm-hmm. kung flu, mm-hmm. I'll tell you this: I laughed my ass off. <laughs> I laughed so fucking hard. I was like, "What you call it? The kung flu? That shit had me." dying laughing right but do i want that our president of the united states to say that right. absolutely not and and i think that's kind of uh, you're hitting the point on the head right there is that this this man you know uh, this creature <laughs> <laughs> he does not represent in any way shape or form somebody who's considered presidential you don't look at this person and think wow he is a presidential type of guy you know nothing Nothing about him makes you think this guy's president, especially when you compare it to all the presidents that have existed. You know, well, I mean, I guess uh, George W. Bush is more kind of like your everyday man type of people uh, or person, and that's why a lot of people related to him. I mean, he had he had a lot of his uh, gaffes too when he's yeah. when talking publicly. You got to put food on your family. <laughs> I was like, this motherfucker said what? What did he say? No, but but I mean, contrary to what his public persona was like, I mean. People have said this guy's actually very intelligent. Yeah. You know? Uh but that that's as, that's besides the point. What I'm saying is Trump. You don't look at the guy again, policies and everything aside, you don't look at the guy and think, Yeah, that is a president. I just don't think he knows what he's doing, you know, and he, it's hard it's hard for me to back somebody who I don't agree with on a lot of things, I guess. And I, I don't know, like I said, once again, I, I got to preface this and say it again. I don't know anything about politics and policy. So mm-hmm. in terms of somebody saying to me, well, look at what he's done for the economy of the United States. Do I? I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I wonder when people say that, if they know either, or if they're just regurgitating stuff from the party that says that these are facts and we're not really doing the research behind it. So I don't really know. So mm-hmm. all I know right now is that I'm going to have to go with my morals mm-hmm. and choose somebody as a presidential candidate that I would like to represent this country. Um, and that's as far as I'm, I'm going to go for that. So, mm-hmm. you know, basically this whole podcast is I'm endorsing Biden. <laughs> you know what? You know what, though? I'm a registered Republican, the, by the way. <laughs> I did crack up during the debate, though, when uh, Biden was trying to talk and uh, he was trying to make points by starting from one, right? Yeah. So he's like, one, blah, blah, blah. And Trump kept interrupting him. And then he's, he's had two, and then Trump interrupted a, him again. And then I think he forgot. He gets so distracted that he was on point number two, and he went to three, and then he started naming some points. And Trump goes, you're actually on two, by the way. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that that's pretty funny, man. <laughs> Cause like Trump was interrupting, interrupting him, like saying all this shit. He goes, oh, actually, you're on, you're on number two, by the way. <laughs> I think the thing that concerns that concerns me about Biden, her, Biden, uh, not even heard um, during a speech, mm-hmm. Biden talked about when he had. I think it was during his vice presidency where he actually had to go through like brain surgery. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like. Fuck, man. So, well, the age factor is definitely something. Well, I think he's turning like 3,072 in about a month. <laughs> this fool's fucking hella old, man. Not, not to mention, I think um, I, I've read that he used to have a stuttering problem too. Mm. Uh, and so like, you know, public speaking is obviously something he had to work on, yeah. right? Um, but yeah. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I'll give Trump credit for. It's a funny nickname, man. That fool just be roasting people all the time. <laughs> We'll call him Sleepy Joe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's why it's like, ah, you know, fuck this guy Trump and everything he stands for. But then you got somebody else who you don't feel confident in like their, uh, their mental state and their mental abilities at this point in their life. It's like this dude seems like he got one foot out the door already. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and look, I don't... I, some of the like speaking mishaps that he's had uh, through the campaigning process. I don't know if that is uh, because of age or, or uh, well, age in terms of his mind deteriorating or or like he just can't handle the whole campaigning process anymore. So he's just like tired. Oh, no, he and he's not fresh. Shit, dude. I, I forgot it was a clip of him coming up and he goes, we're over here at the something something community center. And he was like, no, we're not. That's where I used to internet when I was younger. It's right across the street, but you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
fucking tell that again. I was like, it's probably, I don't know where he's at. Yeah. I'm like, dog, who the fuck are we voting for this but, year? So that's, that's what I'm saying. Is that a result of like his mind just breaking down because of age or because he's, he's like, just tired and he can't handle that type of stuff? And he's like kind of delusional. He's going to be in his 80s by the time he's done. Yeah. Which is nuts. Yeah. You know? how, yeah. Old is, how old is Trump? Like, is he in his 70s? Now? Yeah, he's in his 70s. They're both in their 70s. Damn. Yeah. Trump is just in the younger side of 70s. And uh, Man, he Biden's. Looks, he looks like shit too. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he, I, I call him the orange buffoon. The you know? orange buffoon, dude. <laughs> He, he looks like he looks like a brown paper bag yeah. filled with cheap Halloween candy. He just looks candy. like leather with yeah. a haystack on top, you know? Dude, if Joe Biden can roast, there's so many things Joe Biden can roast that fool about. I'm like, dude, I wish they would have just bought a battle, a battle rapper to write him disses. And dude. that shit would have been fucking hilarious. Speaking of disses, though, man, the low blow of like uh, Trump attacking Biden's son. I mean, yeah. uh, Joe initially thought he was going after Bo. Uh, who 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 passed away, yeah. right? And he served in the military. But then, uh, and then so like Biden goes off on this spiel about like, you know, how dare you attack him? Like he yeah. was, he was uh, you know, um, a hero, military hero, served mm -hmm. honorably, all that. And then Trump just stops him and corrects him. I'm talking about Hunter. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's still a fucking low blow, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then like, look, man, I respect Biden. Uh, Biden for just getting real in that moment, talking about how um, his son had drug problems. Yeah, you know, uh, and and like uh, addressed it as like um, this is a common problem, like that that other Americans are going through, and and my son went through it, and but like even still like the fact that he had to address that, you know, because Trump decided to take a low blow on well, it. I mean, the weird thing is like Trump, you can't. You can't address anybody's flaws. Like you, you're not in that moral position or moral high ground to do anything like that. Yeah, you got to take a look at yourself first. So it's like even even when he says said that, I'm like, who the fuck are you talking but, about, but dude? When he has narcissistic tendencies, it's impossible for him to do that. Yeah, you know, he doesn't ever look at himself and and uh, in a, in a critical light. He yeah. probably looks at it from looks at himself thinking he's the biggest and best of everything probably the smartest man. the most smartest the wealthiest the best at everything mm -hmm. you know and, and look you you see that when he talks you with the Huge. likes of, like you've never seen before it's gonna be the biggest the best you won't even believe it it's you know? gonna be huge yeah huge like human trash human human you human, human trash human trash you, human trash that guy human trash oh for those of you that don't know look up uh, Paulo Costa talking shit against uh, Israel Adesanya UFC fighters human trash human trash <laughs> well guys that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast we usually don't talk about politics but that presidential debate was fucking hilarious like it was it was just honestly hard to get through yeah more than politics I think we just talked about like yeah, the sheer ridiculousness oh, of this it. country, just kind of like yeah, social the media state that we're in. We just have to be. We we all just have to be individually a lot smarter. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm saying, like I'm I'm saying this stuff about myself too. I get hyped up about these quick little articles, and it puts me into a crazy emotional state, and I haven't even done the research. So, it's what it is, man. Well, you guys, if there's any topics you guys want us to talk about, or you guys have any personal issues that you want us to address on the podcast. Anything is up for grabs. That's geniusbrainpodcast at gmail.com. You can find Edric at ed2 on Instagram. Also check out the clothing brand Secret Society. That's S-C-R-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y dot com. And uh, first time customers use the code BRAIN15 to get 15% off your first purchase. Yes, 15% off fat deals, baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, every Sundays and Thursdays, you will see a Genius Brain podcast and we will see you all next time. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that presidential debate was nuts. Yeah, as is the most ridiculous uh, debate I've ever seen, man. But look, I'm looking forward to